Hello and welcome to another edition of Middleware Friday for October 13th, 2017. This is episode 36 and today we're talking about subscribing to business events using the SQL Server trigger for Microsoft Flow. So no community content this week. We're going to focus on the feature content. We'll try to get back to community content here in the upcoming weeks. So first a little bit of a disclaimer. So I am now a Microsoft employee, so I just want to call out that this is still a community initiative and that the opinions expressed in the following content are my own and don't imply any additional warranties. Another thing I do want to mention is that today we're talking about the SQL connector trigger uh, for Microsoft Flow, but I also want to call out that this is the same connector that you'd be using inside of Azure Logic Apps, so depending upon your persona, um, this will work for you in either of the platforms that you choose to use it in. Now the scenario I want to get into today is a situation where you've got customer service and they're receiving phone calls, emails from different customers. And in this case, the business itself is an elevator repair and service company. What happens is if you have pieces of equipment that are failing at a customer site, you probably don't want to have your sales team out there proactively selling if there's existing issues. You probably want your sales team to be engaged in the resolution of those issues to ensure that you have happy customers and that they're interested in doing more business with you in the future. So what we have the ability to do today is by using the SQL Server connector is essentially subscribe to new events inside the customer information system and what this means is whenever there's a new record that's been written to our work order table, we actually can get a notification. And we're going to use Flow uh, to subscribe to these events through the connector. We'll go ahead and use the Compose action, which is going to allow us to construct a message that is user-friendly and can be published to Microsoft Teams. And then what we'll do is we'll make a decision as to which team we want to contact. So if you've got a customer who is in the Western side of North America, you probably want your West team to get that notification into Microsoft Teams and not the East or North team. So what this allows the sales team is to get on, to stay on top of these emerging issues and be able to proactively deal with resolving them. Now this content, or this the idea for this particular vlog did come from the flow blog itself and in this case we've got Samir who leads the connectors team uh, announcing the availability of this specific trigger uh, for the SQL connector. Now but before we get started um, there are a few things that you need to be aware of um, otherwise you're gonna get uh, run into a roadblock here and uh, and get stuck. Now if you run into a situation where this occurs you've made your connection to SQL and a table name is not being populated in the dropdown, there's really done the following. Uh, you probably haven't included an identity column or a row version column. Now you need both of these columns and really what they're there for is for logic apps or I guess the connector more specifically to maintain state. So the connector needs to be able to track changes and there's no way sort of out of the box for that to happen. So as a result, you need to be able to create these two columns. And then what happens is the connector can ensure that there's a, a unique row uh, that does exist and a timestamp that also exists that ensures that uh, an event won't get published more than one time. Now you can see in the last paragraph, it says what happens if there's no such column. Well, these tables will not be listed when you try to use the trigger. And that's the exact situation that I ran into earlier because I didn't go ahead and read through this entire <laughs> blog post. So that's why I felt it was worth calling out. And so when you are creating the table, uh, here's two things that you can do. Here I'm creating an identity column, which is called WID. And it's going to start at one and increment in ones. And then at the bottom there, I have a row version, which is a timestamp column. And this is something that'll get auto populated whenever a record is added to the database. Once you've gone ahead and done that, you will now find that the table name does get populated. In my case, it's called work orders. So that's great. Let's go ahead and build our flow with that prerequisite info out of the way. 
you go into Microsoft Flow, you can go ahead and do a search for SQL. And then what you'll find is there's now two items that come up and it's basically SQL Server when an item is created or when an item is modified. So this is something that previously you weren't able to do because the connector didn't support uh, these triggers. They were just outbound actions instead. Now, next up, you need to configure your connection for this specific trigger. And it requires you to provide a connection name, a SQL Server name, a SQL database name, username, and a password. And do note, as it is called out in the blog post as well, that this does not work for on-premise SQL Server. In my case, I'm using Azure SQL and it is working no problem. With the table now populated, we do have the ability to filter out some records. So we can use an OData filter query if we wish. We can choose the number of results that we want returned um, by specifying top. We can choose an order by clause. And we also can provide a select query if we don't want to return all of the columns from the particular table itself or the row. So for the case, for my case, my table is relatively small, so I haven't bothered providing any of these filters, but just be aware that they do exist. Now, next up with my SQL connection configured, I'm going to compose a message. And really why I do this is I want to have a single message that's going to be reused across all of my different posts to Microsoft Teams. So in this case, I want to provide a customer name, a work order comment, work order create time, a work order ID. And with the Microsoft Teams connector, you can provide some markup through HTML that will make the message stand out more so than just plain vanilla text. Here's the result of my complete flow. Now do note, I do have a switch statement. And what I'm doing is I'm essentially pivoting based upon the region that's provided. So if the record was created in the for the a West region customer, we're going to head over to this. We're going to head over to this execution path, which is going to be responsible for posting to the West sales team in the West sales team channel. And similarly, we have North and default, which means East. Um, if we have records being created in those different regions. And here's just a closer look at the particular switch statement itself. As you can see, I have the same team, but I do have different channels. Uh, so I've got a West sales channel, a North sales channel, and an East sales channel. But the output is the same message because that was constructed earlier on in our flow. So let's now jump into a quick demo. So now we are in SQL Server Management Studio, and here's my database and the table that I'm interested in subscribing to. I can go ahead and execute just a select all statement, and we can see that it's empty for the purpose of this demonstration. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to create a new record. And in this case, we are going to create a new record in the North. So we've got a, a customer ID of that ends in 23, it's called Acme Construction. Our region is north. We can see that the elevator in the southeast corner is non-functional. And here's the timestamp for the specific event inside our customer information system. So let's go ahead and insert this row. Okay, we can see that one row was affected. So now what'll happen is that we should see an update into our Microsoft team and more specifically in the North sales channel indicating that this that there's a, a new work order that has had been a new work order that has been recorded inside of our CIS system. All right, so there we have it. You can see that a new event was just published for Acme construction with the work order ID of 12345 and indicating that the elevator in the southeast corner is non-functional. So let's now jump over to the Microsoft Flow Maker Portal and let's take a look at the run details for this particular instance. All right, so now we're over in the Maker Portal, uh, flow.microsoft.com, and we can see our run history. So let's go ahead and click on see all. 
Now, one thing I do want to highlight is I want to demonstrate, I guess, how frequently data is being checked for. So I'm going to go ahead and select checks, no new data. And what we can see is that it's essentially checking for data every minute, right? So this is not going to give you that extreme low latency that we saw in the Azure event grid scenarios uh, where we saw basically instantaneously events being published. But what this will give you, depending upon the tier of service that you do have, if you're on the free Microsoft tier, you won't see one minute, there'll be a longer delay. But you will generally see um, a one minute, at least a one minute delay um, before you receive the event. Now, certainly in my situation, one minute is more than adequate, but it's just something to be aware of um, when you are configuring this particular solution. So we, here we can see that it was successful. Um, here's when the item uh, had arrived. Here's the switch statement itself. We can see that it was in fact a north related event. And as a result, we're gonna go down the north region execution path and we can see that the data that was being populated includes the correct data for the correct record that was created inside of Azure SQL. So hopefully that gives you a good example of how you can use the SQL connector and more specifically the trigger that will allow you to monitor for new records being created or records being modified. As I mentioned earlier, this is available to both Microsoft Flow and Azure Logic Apps. So depending upon your persona, you know, use it in either or either situation, but do be aware of the requirements for having the identity column and the row version column columns being available in order for the connector to be able to track state changes. So thanks again for tuning in to Middleware Friday for another week. Uh, Steph Jan will have next week's episode. I'm not sure exactly what he's going to be talking on, but uh, look for that. Also, if you haven't signed up for Integrate 2017 USA, that is approaching at the end of the month in Redmond. Uh, there's a long list of both Microsoft and MVP speakers with some content that was shared in London, but also some new content as well. So. Be aware of that and uh, don't forget to sign up for that. Uh, thanks BizTalk360 for once again being a great partner of the show and we'll catch you next time on Middleware Friday.